Depression, misery. I hate everything about my life. It all sucks. It's all shit. I really want to slit my wrist. I killed her. I killed her. It is definitely all my fault. I'm a cunt. I'm a shit. I had to ruin countless lives. Yeah. Doesn't really work, does it? Awkward. after the tragedy of Haruka's late date, and it's super nice of the show to not tell us this for multiple episodes. I mean, yeah, we get that a significant amount of time has passed either way, but the devil is in the details here. Wouldn't you be a lot more comfortable if you knew the exact timetable for everything as it happened? Why leave your audience in the dark? Anyway, we kick things off with this anime's real priority, Annoying the shit out of us. Take this and go get me what I ordered, okay? Uh huh. What are you, cheeky? Just apologize and fix it. Now scurry along. Mm -hmm. You suck. Will you just get me the food I ordered? Right. Little runt. I'm gonna. Not anything but little. Shut up. <laughs> you know, you've got one heck of a set on you, Mister. Well, I got a few other ideas of what we should do with the customer. <laughs> I, you? What if I told you about this? Man, that dick bag is your voice of reason? <laughs> you are so boned. This uh, thing is Ayu. She's terrible and has no real character arc. Welcome to this. She's one of Takayuki's possible love interests at this point in the VN, but I've yet to figure out how anyone could love her or uh, her role in this anime, basically because she has none. It must just be to pull aggro and draw hatred away from the rest of the characters. Yeah, that's gotta be it, right? Oh yeah, sorry, almost forgot. It's at this point in the visual novel that your choices start to happen, that you start to pursue, as I mentioned before, one of up to eight different girls. But unlike in Clan Ad, this story wields morality like a bludgeon and outright punishes you with depression for picking any girl that isn't Mitsuki or Haruka. So why are the choices there at all? In addition to this, the game hammers it into your head that after Haruka's accident, Mitsuki is your true love. She's the one you should be with. What assholes! Let's compare this to Clan Ad for just a minute. In that game, they subtly try to nudge you in the direction of Nagisa at the start of the game, not halfway through. She's the first girl you're introduced to, and her introduction is unique so that you at least remember it down the line. However, you're also simultaneously introduced to Dio and Kyo Fujibayashi. Then, based on your decisions, you can find Katomi, Fuko, and everyone else. They leave it open to your potential discovery, and every path is unique and legitimate. I'm sorry, but if I was playing this game, I'd feel the most drawn towards Haruka no matter what. I mean, assuming I was actually invested. I know, that's probably the least believable thing I've said. Especially as this story unfolds, and Mitsuki is revealed to be the worst character alive and walking around. But hold on, hold on. We'll get there. For now, back to... The restaurant. Maybe every character in this series is mentally handicapped, and that's why this is all normal and acceptable for them. I don't know. It certainly would explain a lot. Stephanie! 
Do you want this job? This episode written by Potato. I mean, how is she not fired? I feel like they might explain this later on, but whatever. For now, she sucks, and every character being totally okay with her costing them business, probably on a nightly basis, is beyond believable. Anyway, Mitsuki shows up to meet Takayuki, where... You got women waving at you. So what? Do you have any idea who she is? Because she's pretty. She is a hot number. What the... Don't you all have a restaurant to run? I mean, meanwhile, poor Miguel's in the back, cooking every meal, delivering them to every table, busting and setting every single one of them. Man, you guys are assholes. They must be able to smell the mainness of Mitski's character, and it's driving them all insane. Do you actually enjoy working there? <laughs> Not really, but it's a job. Oh, well, it looks fun. You looked happy. Riveting dialogue! The two meet up with Shinji for some beers and poorly drawn food items that I can't discern. I mean, okay, those two are obviously fish, but are they raw or cooked? I should probably be able to tell the difference, right? And what's that in the middle? Is that like nachos without the nachos? And anything that makes nachos worth eating? It looks like a giant mound of lettuce with a handful of tomatoes and a half gallon of sour cream erupting from the center. Or is it mayonnaise? Ugh. And what the crap is this? A weak supply of wasabi with six strips of ginger? Can they even tell what they're eating? My arm is broken. Anyway, Mitsuki's job also sucks. They very poorly attempt to hide their obvious relationship from Shinji, and it somehow works. We cut to Takayuki's apartment for the lazy writer's best friend, showing us these two are romantically connected because they're having sex. Let's move in together. We could be like this all the time without having to plan so much. Yeah? We could get a cat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A cat? A cat? Calm down. Poor Takayuki can't handle that level of commitment. Oh, come on, we can't afford anything like that. Not even with our salaries combined. Yeah, I guess you're right. Are you serious right now? A cat isn't that expensive, dude. What, are you gonna buy a tiger and feed it other cats you raise on a caviar diet with ground up money as seasoning? Anyway, Takayuki asks Mitsuki if she just wants to move in with him the next morning, but a single video game poster and his, uh, very well-maintained apartment? somehow convinces her not to because it hasn't changed since before the accident or some other crap. I'm sorry, I'm still not past this. Uh, not the cat thing. That's still a very serious issue, but I'm talking about the whole cost of living together thing. How could that possibly be more expensive than living in two separate apartments on your own? Nothing I could find on Living in Japan explains this. If you both move into a slightly bigger apartment, the cost isn't going to skyrocket. Yes, it is not cheap to live on your own in Japan, but if these two are already capable of living independently on their individual salaries, then moving in together would be cheaper. The only barrier to it would be the traditional cultural Japanese stigma towards unmarried couples living together with no intention of marriage, but since neither of them seem to have any real relationship with their parents or any friends that are super strict, there's no reason why they couldn't move in together. This argument makes no sense. And I have no idea why Mitsuki would agree with such a ridiculous conclusion unless, again, all these characters are mentally handicapped. This scene written by Bicycle. Anyway, after we see Takayuki airing out his sheets from all the sex juices, we cut to Mitsuki at work. Well, I'm sure this will be the epitome of entertainment. Looks like you had a fun time with your boyfriend last night. You're wearing the same clothes from yesterday. It's kind of tacky. What? You, you bitch! I used to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Slut. Don't project your promiscuity on her. I don't care if you happen to be right this one time or not. What if she just owned multiple sets of the same suit for work? 
Meanwhile, at the restaurant... I can't believe you got a driver's license. It took me three years to get my hands on this card. You for real? It only took you three years to get your license? Are you stupid? I thought you said you hadn't driven anything since you got your learner's permit last year. So what? Hmm. Care to guess what this conversation has to do with anything at all? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Well, that is up to the show's standards, so can't complain. Oh, did you say something? I wasn't listening. <laughs> Cut it out, guys. Uh, can I invite you three to ever do your jobs? You're all fired. Don't like your job much, do you? What? It's not what you had planned. Well, it's not what I had planned either, but you roll with the punches. What is with this woman and projecting all her bad life choices onto everyone else? There is literally no reason for her to believe this about Mitski. It has nothing to do with the conversation they're having. Not even a little bit. Does she do this with everything? Hey, wanna catch a movie later? Oh, I bet you hate romance movies, right? Me too. God, that's all they make these days. Like, everybody's falling in love and everything's great for them. Well, life isn't a picnic, you know. Sometimes you gotta go out and fuck, like, 50 guys to find Mr. Perfect. I mean, I haven't gotten there yet, but life just isn't perfect, you know? It sucks. My life sucks. God, I hate everything. The two pass by a swimming pool, which gives Mitsuki a flashback because she used to swim, which... Makes her think of Haruka. Yeah, that wasn't a stretch. Or contrived. And besides that, it's the second time they use this exact flashback in this episode. You hate lazy writing? Me too. My entire life is like a poorly written movie. Everything is pain and misery. I should just end it all. So even though Mitsuki told Susan over here that she didn't have a date that night. So you have a big date tonight? Uh... No, not really. We cut to her having dinner with Takayuki that same night. <sighs> well, thanks for that, liar. Anyway, things get real serious for no particular reason. Yes. I can't do this. It's like we're standing still. And I love you, Takayuki. I can't help it. I really love you. But I need to know, do you love me too? Maybe. So you were serious about the whole moving in thing? Maybe. I want it to be our place. Our decision. Together. Maybe. Um, serious question here. Where is this coming from? You asked Takeyuki about moving in together last night. This morning, he asked you about moving in with him as an alternative to getting a new apartment that for whatever manufactured BS reason, you both agreed you couldn't afford. This is what you call an open discussion, a dialogue that is moving forward. Nothing is standing still. What is this solely based on your observation that Takeyuki's apartment apparently hasn't changed since Haruka's accident? Well, guess what? I've been living in the same house for nearly five years now. It hasn't changed at all either! I mean, that's real fair. Is this some crap that happened based on your stress at work? Regardless, none of that has anything to do with your relationship. It isn't some greater commentary on anything. The two of you looked perfectly happy last night, so this is coming out of completely nowhere! But prepare yourselves for several nautical tons of this baseless, manufactured relationship drama. It never dies. It only slumbers. So you were serious about the whole moving in thing? Yeah. If that's what you want, then I'm all for it. It... wait, what? What could have possibly changed overnight? You both agreed that it was a fact that you could not afford to live together on your combined salaries, but now you just can. It's just fine now. Ever heard of consistency? And there are actually a large number of people that say this show is brilliantly written and realistic. Anyway, the two conveniently run into the now in high school Akane on their way home because this anime is super realistic, remember? and she gives them the hairy eyeball before refusing to acknowledge Mitsuki's existence. 
I haven't seen you in a while, Takayuki. I gotta get over to the hospital. Hopefully I can make it there before visiting hours end for the day. I'll see ya. Okay, okay. So what you're telling me is, the worst character from those first two episodes is now the best character in the entire series? I'd like to slow down here and actually analyze this scene for a minute. First of all, Akane is clearly angry at the both of them for being together. Despite this, she carries herself in what can only be described as that of a respectful adult. She doesn't yell or scream or start a fight because they're in public. She understands that because she's the captain of the school's swim team, she represents more than just herself and acts accordingly. Her implied disgust with Mitsuki doesn't cause her to snap or lose her cool. Instead, she chooses to just say nothing. That's a little something we call restraint, or if you want to give her even more credit, tact. The tone of her voice when talking to Takayuki is clearly measured, indicating that she doesn't particularly like him, but instead wants him to visit her sister in the hospital. Oh yeah, that's another plot point she manages to drop in very subtle subtext. Haruka is still alive and in the hospital. Finally, she walks off. She doesn't run off crying because she's a woman and can't handle bottling her estrogen-fueled emotional chaos or some other crap. She actually has real dignity and class. So, against all of my expectations, Akane has officially become the best thing about this show. Well, anyone care to wager how long this will last? Uh, two, I've got two episodes over there. Three? Three, three episodes to the lady in the back. Four? Four, this guy's crazy and I love it. <laughs> five, do I hear five? And after the two feel appropriately sad about abandoning their loved one after her tragic demise, the episode ends. Well, hey. At least we have a tiny pinhole of light to hang on to. That's what I'm taking away. It's better than the mountain of shit that came along with it. But anyhow, that's gonna do it for today. I'm Will Ryan, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, Will Ryan here. If you're new to our channel, go ahead and click that little icon right there in the middle of the screen to subscribe. And if you want to check out more in-depth dissection like what you just saw, go ahead and click on one of the three previous seasons of 25 the Hard Way. Enjoy yourselves and stay skeptical.